<laughs> All right, we're ready for episode 16. We've got Professor Emperor Education. Let's get it. I like his little hop. Interesting. Not really. I'm just making sure you're not trying to invite your army of demonic tentacle monsters over for a party or something. I'm trying to make them go to Can we they please have a little bit of trust at this point? I mean, of all the places in this expansive galaxy, this isn't the most comfortable location for me to be in. Besides, I'm not Fulgrim. So you're telling ah! me that succulent food, a luxurious atmosphere, and an actual bed are less comfortable than the realm that is literally a collective seizure? Eh. If you had more mental capacity than a box of Grok's manure, oh. maybe you too would appreciate its own fight, unique fight, majesty. Fight, fight, fight! This assumes that I'm insane enough to want to. Nevertheless, you just being here is a sign of trust in my lord, is it not? Eh, perhaps. Crazy. Damn skilled. Why are you still here? What are you actually doing? Don't mistake my question for curiosity. I'm mostly just concerned. Research, observation, experimentation. Not very detailed. Nerves, listening to the whispers of the warp, passing the time of day, and so on. Albeit, it's pretty damn hard to get a good focus in this place with father around, finding any warp traffic to spy on, which is a tinted gold and full of <laughs> frustration, is like trying to remove a demonic incursion from the oh. rectum. No, I left my heresy detector in my chains, mm. like her going on from here. Ow! Ow! Stop that! Stop what? Stop dazzling me with your ignorance! <laughs> your shiny, half baked head is burning through my retina like an acid made of stupid. Ah! <laughs> I, I love that. That's a nice burn. I love it. <clears throat> yeah, they they are just like, like honestly, kitten is basically just. They're they're fighting like brothers. They're just fighting like brothers at this point. <laughs> oh gosh, this is the vod is gonna be pretty insane. Oh my gosh. Uh, seriously, though, have you still not got that this heresy expression you speak of is just your Imperium's excuse to put a giant bolt into the head of anyone who goes against you? It's kind of convenient. The Imperium is like a child and a my dad is better than your dad yep, argument that receives the right to kill anyone that attempts to argue back, you yeah. wicked still dodies. <laughs> <laughs> wow, their, their insults are really good. <laughs> oh gosh, so good, so good. I don't know. Diabolical, creepy, and straight up evil. Maybe you wouldn't be such easy targets for both propaganda and a bolt shelter on the forehead. I mean, you're not doing yourselves any favors by wearing the skin of your enemies, for example. Mm, for yeah. your information, I have never worn the skin of my enemies. Do I look like a Necron Flayer to you? To or Curse? Necrons and your thousand sons do have pretty similar motives nowadays. Yes, we've Oof, already sent yes. the cease and desist order. <laughs> They're just being ferocious plasteel dicks about it. <laughs> well, well, technically, technically, they did it before you, so you have to cease and desist. So you're saying Custodes and Primarchs are like brothers? Looks at all the Sanguinius posts. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold, hold on there. Hold on there. I'm saying they are fighting like brothers. Like. A very important distinction. I would obviously not go for someone that I am related to. So. I hope that answers your question. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> yep. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they don't care. <laughs> this is so stupid. I love it. <clears throat> he, can't see. he laughed because he couldn't see anything. I'm gonna keep going before it gets. Like you woke up on the wrong side of the eye. Oh. I do see where you're coming from. All the decapitated heads and giant spikes do make it look like we're compensating for one thing or another. 
Like that could be some parents. But to be fair, given your Imperium's alarming obsession with skulls, I'd say you have some issues of your own. Mm. Nevertheless, did you only come here to watch over my shoulder, or did you have some other reason? Well, I actually wanted to ask you something. Well, go ahead. I'd break the monotony. I've been wondering. I served my Emperor for somewhere around 11,000 years or so. I don't really keep track of him. And even though he's my, uh, our father, I don't actually know all that much about him, oh. so I've seen with my own oh. eyes. Isn't that enough? Of course it is. Oh. After fighting this side and hearing his dreams for humanity, no sane man could not appreciate his majesty, wisdom, and might. Indirectly, Colin, you can say. <laughs> Truly, he is the one and only worthy leader of mankind. No, say Gwynnies could have been. From? Did he have parents, or did he just, I don't know, crawl out of a gold deposit? Then not that's a bad thing, of course. I'm sure it was the most glorious deposit in the world, man. <laughs> oh. Hungering for some crisp, luscious knowledge, are we? Knowledge? How fascinating. I thought you companions were special. He's also got the voice. Do all the Primarchs, like, canon have, like, a... Like, Emperor voice? <laughs> Anyways, BS. <laughs> they just call him Dad because it's sweet, I think. Actually trying to act as completely uninteresting in personal automatons. Well... Truth be told, I think as time has gone by, most of us have either gone a bit into the cookie <laughs> some uh, oh, you think? form of rationality. Actually, under one exception, everyone has completely lost their mind. Hey, Kitty! Want to go and take a swim in the Promethean pools with us? No. Hey, be that way! You can hear the as music say, in the background. I still follow the Emperor right to the Iron <clears throat> Terror if he commands it. I live for him. I follow his every word and I never defy him. And I would happily wow. give my life for him. But, well, there's a thing. I'd happily give my life for him. Implying that you can actually be happy. Oh. Which also implies the fact that you have thoughts and feelings of your own, which subsequently implies you aren't an incredibly stale person whose personal interest can be summed in the words standing around. I guess that's part of the reason why I was elected to the position of Captain General. After millennia of isolation and your occasional murdering of demons trying to creep in, I'm the one and only companion who's not batshit insane. And I suppose that's also part of the reason why you're still wearing Ooh. your armor after all this time. Yeah! Or, uh, well, not all this time. Oh, um, yeah? I went through a phase. No! Please don't cut to that. I don't want to see... My image of Kitten will be ruined forever, and I'm going to be so sad. I'm going to be so sad. I'm going to be... Oh, no, I can't. Oh. Unless I missed another message. I don't know. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, no. I don't want to see him. This is going to ruin my mental image of Kitten. Be my favorite brother. Oh, is it gonna? I have. I'm not even gonna finish that. That could have been really bad for me. Oh no, it's a phase. But that that means he probably still did. Oh. Can't say I'm particularly proud of it. There's one close break that would be my imagination, you know. Shh, 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 shh. Anyway, as you were asking, the subject. You know what this means? That means there is fan art of kitten out there as a fab stodies and i am disappointed i'm not mad i'm just disappointed oh. okay i know he's been around pretty much as oh. long as fans have passed guided us through all that but did he make humanity his image or is he simply the guardian of our species and if he made us what made him and if he didn't make us what made us ah the oldest question in human history what are our origins? Yeah. Sadly, I'm of little help to you in that field. Been too busy comprehending the materium and superhero comics. Really? Did the Emperor <laughs> tell you himself? Superhero he comics? Okay, book about it or something. Actually, he never told me much about his own past. Oh, if it makes if it makes you feel better, kitten does not remove his armor. Fantastic! I am very happy. Very, very happy. <laughs> Asked our humanity's origins. Perhaps he didn't want us to know, since he's always been so exasperatingly introverted about things like teaching. That, yeah. or it's because I never really asked. May mm. have been the latter, all things considered. And no, I don't have an old book lying about that specifically tells us where we all came from. Oh, Only I see where this episode is going now. I have the talent to write a fictive suicide of that caliber. <laughs> Besides, even if I had a book like that, all the exciting demon tomes with screaming faces and beware signs lying about would probably just make it look severely unappealing in comparison. Mm. Gah, I suspected as much. And I've looked through all the tomes and slates in the palace's libraries. 
all the data stored in archives, ancient texts and journals. I've even looked through albums of travel photos for Terra's sake, but I couldn't find anything about the time before the Emperor conquered Terra during the Age of Strife. If you are that curious, why not just ask Father himself? Yeah, I don't know. Multiple reasons. His mind is so splintered that remembering such ancient knowledge might make him fling his skull across oh, the hey, falling Oh hey! It's a centurion! That and I'm much unsure if he'd actually want to tell me. I mean, if he never told you, why would he tell me? Well, he does seem to like you, despite like. him being grumpy and like. incarnate. He relies on you to listen to his boundless complaints and to inform him about, to quote, stupid shit. <laughs> I'd even say he trusts you. He certainly trusts you more than he trusts me or any of his other sons for that matter. Yeah? Actually, are you sure you're not his wife or something? Ah! <laughs> Wait. Really? Wait. You think so? No. Indeed, stepmother. First of Bruh. all, quiet you. Second of all, I think you might be right. What? I'm really wrong. What? So I might just go and ask him then. No, do I that. don't I don't think I don't think Actually, I Actually, don't you wanna come too? Nah, I'm gonna practice for that talent show that I heard us coming up next Thursday. Uh. You say they're batshit insane, but your fellow companions do seem to know how to have a good time. Uh, uh, unless you want soggy hair and sing up for me, I would highly recommend ew. you. That. Why should I? Oh. Ellipsis. So let me get this straight. Mm -hmm. You mean to say that you really have no records of human history? Oh Before boy. the Age of Strife accessible within the Imperial Palace? No, not really. Most of it is so heavily censored by the Ecclesiarchy and the Inquisition that more closely resembles a barcode than it does anything else. So you have no recollection of the tales of the Old Ones, my own conception, the Rebellion of the Men of Iron, or any other tidbits of humanity actually kicking ass? <laughs> Incredible. Hey guys, that was Steve! Steve! Say hi to Steve! That's Steve right there. He comes in many forms. It's my servo skull. Incredible. I honestly thought I'd hit the greasy fucking bottom of this shit <laughs> when you told me of the Inquisition's activities, but I'm just now realizing that I'm only scratching the surface of this frozen ocean of ineptitude. It's almost as if nobody wants to hear about how our people weren't the be-all and all of civilization in this cesspit of a galaxy. <laughs> Um, yeah, funny that, isn't it? Right. This is yeah. something that I shall now unfuck post haste. Magnus, <laughs> fetch some parchment and do what you do best. Take notes. Do not worry, <laughs> I always have paper with me. What a fucking nerd you are. I was gonna say, anyway, you're a nerd. I want you to write down everything I am about to tell you. Excellent. And when I'm done, rewrite the whole damn thing as a grand historical document. Then I want you to start covering it in holy seals and shit, and then throw it into a pile of dirt for a while, so it gets that shitty old oh, paper Oh, yes, look. yes. That'll make stupid people think it's inherently trustworthy. Good idea, oh, good idea, and good idea. Britches. Yes, my lord? When Magnus finishes Shiny his britches. chicken scratchings, I then want you to take this document to the scribes, have it proof or to make sure he doesn't sneak in any mimetic chaos bullshit, then have it mass produced <laughs> and distributed all across the galaxy to all people of authority. Alright, let's do if it. You literally need to ram it down their fucking throats. Wow. Just make sure they read that shit and understand it. Good Those idea. Spam box filter shall stop my glorious wisdom <laughs> this time. Yes, my lord. Now, gather around children, for it is I'm grand gathered. story time. Are we gathered? Q visuals. Children, are we gathered? Let's gather. We're gonna gather. Gather around children. <laughs> In the beginning, there was nothing. The nothing is nothing that has ever not existed. <laughs> The nothing just kind of sat about and unexisted, not bothered by any such thing as existence or reality. There may have been some bits of heat energy floating about, but that shit doesn't count. <laughs> Eventually, however, this frigid, lonely expanse of plot hole level nothing got sick of being nothing and decided to get a job. <laughs> so all the energy bits sucked themselves into a ball smaller than the level of progress made since I was put on this over-glorified oh, portal lighthouse. Then, the energy exploded with the force of something that you'd compare giant fucking explosions to. There has never been, and never will be, an explosion as big as this one. They're in like virtual so reality for the story. It's literally still happening right now. Wait, what caused the heat to compress and explode like that? I don't fucking know. <laughs> Dark matter. 
playing walkers, <laughs> prayers, he does it though. Geeks with nothing better to do, making a badass fictional universe for the purpose of inevitably <laughs> yeah. selling inordinately expensive plastic miniatures. It hmm. could have been anything. So after the mega explosion, atoms started to take form from the massive amounts of energy that floated around, and these atoms started recombining, collapsing, and forming themselves into elements, molecules, and compounds. These substances, unlike energy, had mass and decided to get closer to each other because now Steam. Yes. gravity applied to them because <clears throat> that's just what fucking happened. Fuck this boring comic shit, let's get to the good stuff. Yes. As matter formed into big lumps, these lumps became celestial formations. Stars, planets, nebulas, asteroids, comets. I like Eventually, the big volcano. Due to conservation of energy and some weird chemical reactions, life eventually formed on these lumps of space crap. <laughs> Wait, oh boy. These things can die so they're special. Ha! <laughs> Supposedly, the first life that came about was a race of beings that became known as the Old Ones. Oh. The reason for this nickname Keep is that chunky. they were the ultimate rulers of reality and evolution. Chunky, and chunky. And they were really fucking old. Go figure. These beings are the shitty, neglectful grandparents of all that is life. They evolved so damn hard that they eventually became spiritual entities, discovering the so-called realm chunky. of souls. As a side note, as you can see, they looked something like big, fat amphibians before they huh. evolved into beings of pure power. So that's a lot of progress for a bunch of giant, hyper-intelligent toadmen. Come yeah, to I'd say so. It, that sounds a lot like the Administratum. Incomprehensibly powerful for almost no reason. Toadman, you rose to a typewriter with a fucking mouth. Anyway, they then decided to create other species <laughs> for shits and giggles. Some said that they created all life after themselves, but I'm not so sure on that one. Huh. Perhaps they helped push the boat you know they, out, they but they certainly did didn't fucking build it. So mm. these old ones didn't create mm -mm. humanity. That's Eldar. what I just said, it you hollow-headed many. Most life evolved in one way or another, and anyone who doesn't accept that is probably or really, Eldar, really, really drunk. Lorgo's going to have fun with this. <laughs> Continuing it's canon on. that they look like the chubby Next frogs. Arrive, That's hilarious. Next to arrive, we're a bunch of milk <laughs> that the you bits, would recognize right? as the Eldar. Due to the fact that, early in their evolution, nice. they reproduced like space rabbits, they actually ended up becoming the dominant race in the galaxy. The old ones were more like sprout <laughs> singularities of imbalanced min max. <laughs> Thank you, Species 316, for the super chat. A history of the entire 40k galaxy, I guess. We're gonna, we're gonna find out. We're gonna find out if we it covers everything. I know a little bit about it. Hanging around here and there. But neither race really cared for each other, so they coexisted peacefully, one spreading like a pointy oh, eared plague, gosh. while the, the other music. pooped out orangutans, more frogmen, and races with unpronounceable names. But then, came the Necrontier. Wait. That sounds familiar. Yeah. Strap yourselves to something, because here comes the most obvious plot twist of the fucking century. Pretty messed up. The Necrontier up. were salty assholes, because <laughs> they had evolved on a shitty, radiation-blasted yep. planet. Yep. They built underground cities that seriously looked like depressing tombs, You'd because be depressed their life too sucked if you had so space much cancer. that they would rather wait out their own death than do much else. After years of being subservient to their animosity, like an entire race of entitled <laughs> middle-aged people, they became envious of both the old ones incredible powers and the Just Eldar's spinning. massive galaxy spanning girth. Of course oh, they were little more than an irritating girth. bunch of self-pitying tearjerkers to such powerful oh. races. Eventually, however, the spite of the Necrontia <laughs> became so mighty that they started hating all life in the galaxy, even themselves, and decided to start murdering literally everything. However, they soon realized that Everybody. manually making sure every single grass straw on a planet was dead was really fucking tedious, so they started snooping around for something to make into a super weapon. Oh. That led to them finding a weird bunch of gas orbiting the super radioactive star that had turned their planet into the empire of atomic bombia. Hmm. They suddenly noticed that the gas was feeding on the very energy of the star. Nom, 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 it turned out nom, nom. that the gas was alive, but not in the same sense as other life forms. I like it had little. evolved in a whole different way, and was technically even older than the old ones. Of course, all it actually did was eat radiation and, you know, be what is basically celestial fart gas. <laughs> they but do of suck. course, these assy necrondards just had to fuck with this peaceful, sun-eating anomaly. 
They proceeded to collect as many of these weird sentient gas clouds uh -huh. as they could find and forge bodies of living metal for them because what isn't that the first oh. idea that comes to your mind as well. They used the gas's own radiation-eating abilities to lure the dormant consciousnesses of them into the bodies they had made via the use of a bridge of starlight oh, or I some don't... pretentious shit I like saw that. It... So after Eon... This is not the lore I know. This is not the lore I know. What? What? What about the Catan? What about? What about the? Hmm. I don't know when certain lore got dropped. So. This is retconned. Older lore, cool. Cause I'm looking at this, I'm like, this is, not what I am aware of. Okay, cool. But this is funny. I like this. I was just like, I was waiting for, the Catan to pop up and I was like um hmm 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 of peacefully orbiting stars and eating radiation these beings which knew no other need than to drift around and consume were suddenly given incredibly powerful physical forms and hyper computerized synthetic brains to give Ooh, them all the knowledge that the necrotry hearts had collectively acquired <laughs> as you can guess this went swimmingly for everyone involved <laughs> wait I think I can guess who these guys are now. Congratulations. Wow, you're so smart. Gas entities. They became the Catan. And the Necrons here... ...became the Necrons? Give this man a PhD wow. because that's some serious brain power for a giant armored potato chip. <laughs> but yes, these beings, in their fancy new bodies, with their big new brains, were named the Catan by the Necrontier, and were worshipped as gods. The Catan weren't nice though. They absorbed all the living metal the Necrontier had amassed and used it to transform this massive species of psychopaths oh, okay. into a race of living murderous machines okay, who mindlessly just served weird. them. Okay, got they it, also got it, got ate it. most of the Necrontier's souls mm, while they tasty. were at it because they tasty. were ungrateful assholes like that. Nom, 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 That's nom. also when these mounds of fluid dickery discovered that souls were far more appealing than space radiation. I, mean... I guess souls have more nutrition or something. Mm. So the cat tan started And they taste like atomic fireballs and spicy gummy bears, just so you know. Back through the extensive memories of the Necrontier, now renamed Necrons for some reason, and saw that yeah. the old ones had the biggest, tastiest souls of them all, mm. and decided that it would be a good idea to He eat looks kind of tasty. When the cat tan came gnawing at the old one's front door, the old ones of course decided to punch the shit out of them with their minds, like all grandparents do. But oh, that's when oh. they noticed that their psychic powers were useless against both them what and the Necrons that? because they had no souls of their Oof. own. This started a massive galaxy-wide massacre of the Old Ones Yikes. that went so far that they nearly became extinct. I guess you could say that the Old Ones got their life towed away from them. Seriously though, that's awful. Well, I guess the Necrons take up what they wanted in the end. Not quite. See, some of the old ones survived, and they the decided that the only way to stop this imminent galactic doom is to fuck up in an equally as awful manner as the Necrontier. Thus, they created a new race, one which could oh, find the soulless no. Necrons for them. A race with strange oh, reality-bending no. powers oh, no. fueled by crowd oh, mentality no. instead of souls. A race that knew and desired only war and destruction. Give it to me, chat. Who is it? Who is it, chat? Let me hear your war cries in here. And hello to everyone who's joined. Put put your war cries in the chat. <laughs> oh my gosh! I'll do a little one start. Wah! <laughs> there we go. There we go. There we go. Yes, we're getting the best boys. <laughs> A race that could weaponize anything and was almost impossible yep. to kill. A race that became known then as the Krorks, or as we know them today, the Orcs. Because shortening yeah. names is a thing. Yep. What? <laughs> There's a plot twist you didn't see coming. The Click Orcs bait. were actually important all along. So yeah, while the Krorks were fighting the Necrons, the Eldar were shitting their collective frilly patties because they knew that they were next on the menu. <laughs> <laughs> so they decided to salvage as much of the old one's tech as they could and fuse it with their own. Believe it or not, the webway was actually Ooh. a creation of the old ones, but the Eldar nicked off with the designs like the thieving bastards they are. 
that said, by combining webway technology and the power of the realm of souls, they created a new type of material to combat the Wraith living bone. metal of the Necrons called Wraithbone. The Wraith constructs were sent into battle alongside the Krorks to fight back the Necrons. Turns out that while the Cat-10 were immune to psychic powers, it seemed as they could and handle being Wraithboned. Oh. From the moment I heard the name Ouch. come up, I knew you'd say I, that. Why I wish I did, but I should have known better. Oh, I should have known better. <laughs> you the smartest kid on the fucking block. Of course I am. No wonder you were bullied by your brothers. Uh -huh. Now that's just uncalled for. Anyway, oh just gosh. when things started to go down the drain for the Cat-10, things got even worse for them. There's one particular asshole among them known as the Deceiver. Good friends oh. with the Eldar laughing uh -huh. brought together the most edgy Cat-10 he could possibly find. Yeah. Creatures with names that only the most lonely of people could come up with, such as the Nightbringer, the Void Dragon, <laughs> and the Outsider. The Dessa ever then said to his fellow celestial gas canisters, They, all the other Cat-10 are weak and being killed off. We should eat them before they die so their powers won't be wasted. Plus, the Cat-10 started in fighting, and no, 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 while no, no, also no. being destroyed by the Korks and the Eldar, because that is clearly what an intelligent life form yes, would do. Yes, precisely. So much destruction was caused in this, the first great war, that the Cat-10 suddenly realized they were expending more energy and they were absorbing oh, no! and would run out of power if they kept this up. Uh... All according to plan, Shago Rath said as he laughed away the night with the Death Lever. Killing all of your allies in the middle of a giant war was apparently a bad idea. Who would have fucking thought? <laughs> Plus, they simply decided to retreat back to the tomb worlds with their Necron armies to wait for the universe to become plump, juicy, and unprepared again. Mm. It would seem that at some point during that time, the Necrons must have regained some consciousness and taken revenge against the Catan for screwing them over. So I have been led to believe... Well, to be honest, it kind of sounds like the deserves what happened to them. That's what you get for being a filthy Xeno, after all. Oof. <laughs> so with that giant cluster fuck out of the way, you'd think things would get better. But nope. This giant war had left the universe a complete fucking mess. The old ones were near extinct. The Eldar were still scared shitless yeah, and worst I would of be all, too. the Krorks, with no Necrons left oh, no! turned on their creator since the old ones had forgotten to install a fucking <laughs> I was gonna say, you gotta turn them off! <laughs> oh. Here we go. They could be held at bay due to having no technology of their own. They that put the chairs in front of them. was on the horizon. You see, all the souls who were eaten, and um, all no, those no, no, who no, died no. in the battles created a major imbalance in the realm of souls. This imbalance yeah. within the outer realm corrupted and twisted it with all the ill will, fears, and yep. general lack of oh. common fucking decency that life now collectively experienced. Nightmarish spiritual entities started to emerge from the darkness of the realm like a giant galactic panic attack. <laughs> it was at this point that the first demons emerged and the realm of souls was given a new name. The Warp! That all makes sense. Yup. Not only did that war oh. fuck up the universe, but it fucked up the outer realms of the yep. universe too. Compared to that war, this 10,000 year old conflict that started when fucking Horos decided to be a bad boy is barely a blip <laughs> on the radar. Yep. Puts things into context, doesn't it? Because it's pretty messed up now. I suddenly feel small. Yep. And I don't know how to feel. <laughs> You'll get used to it. Besides, you're shorter oh. than most of your brothers anyhow. That's entirely my choice and you that know That is it. true. But where were we? Humanity during all of this. We were all busy evolving from primates into tribal cavemen, picking our noses, <laughs> and fornicating in the ways that primitive beings do, <laughs> but not for long. You see, warp storms caused by this huge war fucked the Back yeah, to the show! And additionally, demonic predators of the warp finished off most, if nom, not nom, nom, nom. the remaining old ones. It's like some complete ass wipe suddenly invaded an old folks' home, <laughs> demolished all their belongings, and subjected all old people to summary executions. And then another completely unrelated group came along and did the exact same thing all over again. The Eldar, realizing their own incredible fragility, decided fuck it. Literally. <laughs> and so they did. <laughs> <laughs> so much so that they repopulated the galaxy oh again, my gosh. the dominant species once more, and ruined their own reproductive yep. cycle to the point of near non-functionality. I mean, oh, I know no. you lose it if you don't use it, but if you use it fucking constantly, uh, it's gonna get worn out and shrivel ew, up. Ew, it's at this point that the Ibiotsais once species emerged. 
The what? I am absolutely hilarious, even after all these millennia. Oh, d <sighs> I still don't get it. So, actual humans uh. finally started coming forth out of the evolutionary fuckfest at this point, <laughs> and a handful of them gained psychic <laughs> powers similar to that of other species carrying souls around. Oh, no. These early day psychers oh. called themselves shamans, and they were totally super badass, guiding humanity by learning about the ways of nature and the universe's history through the power of the realm of souls and probably some shrooms. However, when the doddering demon douches accompanied with an entire gang of horribly unnecessary creatures like enslavers and psychnoia and started oh. to show up, the shamans started to be horribly killed off in spasmodic manners. Oh. So of course, the shamans decided they needed to put their heads together to solve the problem. So they did. Again, literally. By combining their very souls, bonk. psychic powers, bonk, knowledge, bonk. and strength through ritualistic mass suicide. <laughs> They achieved in the blink of an eye something that had taken the it is our glorious god emperor to do they all became a single living being of spiritual energy and power in short they created me, me. <gasps> that scared me <laughs> That, that that was so scary. 